Welcome back to the Hollow Sky Podcast, Listener Experience Edition. We are your hosts. I'm Steven. And Kyle. And if this is the listener experience, it's Thursday. So you know what that means. You about got the week choked out. Got it in a headlock, making it tap. You're almost there. We are close. And we want to thank you for choosing us to help you get through that last little stretch. We appreciate you all being here. Again, thanks for hanging out with us. Today's listener experience is a weird one. Um, me and Kyle just read through it a little bit. Yeah, it's it's interdimensional torment. You're it's definitely it's definitely bizarre. Definitely, definitely bizarre. Kind of runs uh, not not totally in in line with the giant brains, but something about brains and heads have just been been going on this week. I guess that is weird. Uh, before we get into that, we got to get through the housekeeping. So check us out at all our socials, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Discord, Reddit. Come and hang out with us. Be part of the cult if you're not already there. Join the community. Be cool to each other. You know the drill. If you have a listener experience you'd like for us to feature on a future show, Kyle's got some info that you're going to want. You're definitely going to want this. I've seen people asking for it, and it's simple. It's just an email address. Podcast at gmail.com You write your story out in as much detail as you possibly can and then send that bad boy on over to the email. Steve and I will get it. We'll file it in our professional filing system and then it'll get turned into an episode and you guys will be stoked. It's just an all-around good time. That's what I'm saying. Nothing to it but to do it. That's right. And it has to be done at this point. You you can't procrastinate anymore. I know, I know we're all a bunch of procrastinators, but it's something you gotta do. Yep. Nothing to it. Nothing to it but to do it. Let's get fucking weird. That's it. If you'd like to support the show, there's plenty of ways you can do that. Uh you can head over to Patreon, peep that. Uh for seven dollars a month, you get extra shows, ad free shows, early shows. Uh, casket breath drops, coupons to the store. Also, I want to make it known, anybody that purchases our Patreon uh, through Apple, if you're already grandfathered in, you're good. But if anybody wants to purchase directly through Apple, come November, they're going to start charging a 30% Apple fee. So that's going to jump your $7 up to like $9.30. It's just yeah, going across really. the board. So... Since nobody wants to pay more money for anything, there are loopholes. Do not purchase the Patreon through your Apple app. You can go to the website, purchase it through there, and stay at our $7 tier. Right? If you already got it, you're grandfathered in. It doesn't matter. But after November, they're going to start charging you more. and That way Apple can just kind of tuck it in their pockets because clearly they need more money. Well, I mean, I was going to say it's it's definitely a economy that one would go, you know, uh, we should probably make more money. Yeah, they're they're definitely struggling with their ten million dollar cell phones and shit. Right. Anyway, we just wanted to put that out there now so you don't get caught off guard. If you're already in your grandfathered in, if you don't want to go through the Apple store, you're good. You can go to the website, purchase it there. Um just avoid that when it comes up in November because it's stupid. They're just trying to strangle out little guys and it's that's ridiculous. what it is. But anyway, off my high horse, I just want to give you guys a warning. We appreciate everybody that goes over the Patreon helps us supports us all that, all that goodness. We just don't want you guys to get hit with anything that's unnecessary. Um, yeah. Store hollowskypodcast.com. You can go over there and peep that. We got t-shirts, we got hats, we got stickers, new stickers up sticker bundle. We got the H sigil, all kinds of cool shit over there. Best thing you can do, share the show word of mouth. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Every time somebody mentions a podcast, it doesn't matter what kind of podcast it is. Marriage counseling podcast, say, hey, Hollis guy. Cooking podcast, say, hey, Hollis guy. Uh, g- gardening podcast, Hollis guy. Uh, f- football podcast, Hollis guy. Just keep throwing it out there. Yeah. Keep throwing it out there. Also, if you want a different Hollow Sky experience, you can start tuning into the YouTube. Head on over to the YouTube channel. We got these cameras are rolling, and Kyle has been editing the shit out of stuff. So you can go see us 
talk about your experience, not live, but almost live. Yeah. So it's cool. I don't know what the timestamp is, but they're probably mad at this point. So here we go. <laughs> Today's listener experience comes to us from our friend Katie. It is titled The Snowflake Arizona Cabin Incident. Mm, interesting. Katie says, when I was a little girl around sixth grade, my family went to Snowflake, Arizona, where my grandparents had a small cabin. We always had a great time. I'm just going to get to it. My sister and I slept in a loft, which was completely open to the rest of the cabin, where we could look down on everything. We got tucked in, and everyone went to sleep, except for me. Something had taken over my ability to speak, and I remember not being able to move. In complete darkness, there came a head of an entity, and it started far away and slowly moved closer to my face. It was very slow moving, closer until it almost reached my forehead, but right before it touched the skin on my forehead, it exploded. The only way I can explain it is that it was kind of digital, almost like games on the very first computers made. It wasn't gory or bloody, but once the particles disappeared, another one started to form and come. This went on, which I felt like was forever. I was scared and I felt awful the whole time. I just wanted it to end. I remember feeling hot and clammy and my mouth feeling dry. I got the impressions that these these faces were trying to scare me because they would move and distort into sinister expressions. It was like they were on a conveyor belt, moving very slowly toward my forehead, and they all exploded. It just felt like prolonged torture. I just wanted it to be over, but once one exploded, there was always another one in line coming at me. I don't remember going to sleep, and the next morning I didn't mention it to anyone because I didn't remember it had happened until 30 years later. The memory came back, and I remembered this traumatic experience like it had just happened. I even remembered feeling the hot and clammy with a dry mouth. It came to me as I was telling my friend about my grandfather's passing and how he left the property to me and my siblings. Back to my story. Back at home now, I was getting my hair done. My hair later lady said, "Oh my gosh, you have a different you have different color hair growing out of a spot on the top of your head." "Oh really?" I said, and nothing else was mentioned. This spot with different color hair ended up falling out, and it's now an indent in the very center of my head. I've asked everyone like doctors, nurses, skin therapists, and one can say what it is, or no one can say what it is or why why it's intended. Here are some pictures of it. It's kind of hard to see the dent, but it's there. I included a small picture of myself in the outhouse on the property so you can see me at the time. I was all knees and elbows, but just a kid that went through something traumatizing and then went on to never remember it until 30 years later. Has anyone experienced these faces? Anyways, I think you guys are great, and I kind of feel like we'd be friends if we knew each other. I've had other weird stuff happen throughout my life, too, which has made me interested in all things strange and unexplainable. I don't know what it was in Snowflake, but I got the feeling these faces were conscious and they knew that they were making me miserable. I left out some unimportant details, but let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer anything. The fact that it happened in Snowflake, Arizona, where Travis Walton still lives, I think, doesn't have anything to do with my story, but it's kind of cool. I think technically he was abducted in Heber, Arizona. The area has Indian ruins everywhere. I haven't been back since I was a kid, but I'm looking forward to going back as soon as I can, or as soon as I can get my buddy to go up there with me. He likes unexplainable stuff too. You guys can call or text me anytime. Stay weird. Your friend, Katie. Katie, first off, thank you for taking the time to send in your experience. Um, Yeah, that one is... Interesting. Interesting. The thing that immediately stands out, and I know Kyle's already thinking about it, is the fact that these things at a certain point turn digital. Yeah. Whenever they broke apart, uh, which almost, granted, I mean, I, it almost mirrors like Kyle's eye encounter that he had. With yours, did did they dissipate? Did they fall apart, or were were they still there when you put your head under the covers? Um, when I put my head under the covers, it was still there. Hmm. It was still there. I didn't have anything quite like this, but I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of torn, man. Like initially, 
you know, you hear the digital aspect of it and it totally feels like a screen memory. And then the fact that she forgot about it for 30 years also suggests like we've heard in, in several extraterrestrial cases, you know, the, the fact that they'll have these encounters or abductions and then they're forced to not remember any of it only to then uncover it later on in life, which is exactly what happened. The thing that throws me for a curveball is the torment feeling of it tormenting her. That feels more oppressive and demonic than yeah. extraterrestrial. So that's the curveball for me. Yeah, I agree. Usually in extraterrestrial-esque uh, cases they're using screen memories to try to relax the abductee to try to make it feel less like oppressive is a good word that you used, you know, make it, make it feel something memorable. This, especially the way you describe it, Katie definitely um, feels like it wanted you to be afraid, which I mean, that could have tons of crazy connotations at, at on its own, you know, like was this thing powering itself up off your fear? Was it using fear to distract you from something else that was going on in the cabin? Maybe not to you specifically, but maybe to your other family members, maybe that thing was just there to keep you put in one spot. So you would not move, even though you couldn't move because it had already essentially uh, paralyzed you. Um, Not to mention another thing to point out is the fact that, it, it would it would almost suggest that her trauma response kicked in and that's what helped shield the whole thought process to begin with because she oh, yeah. she even says herself that it's a traumatic experience and then we know that in some cases of trauma people will just block that entire situation out of their head that's just gone yeah yeah i mean it does it does sound like that which i mean also makes you wonder you know, playing playing devil's advocate here. What happened after you you, just, you just said you don't even remember falling asleep, essentially. You don't remember anything. So it, that could just have been the start of some sort of weird abduction scenario, which is also terrifying. Yeah, I mean, then she has the weird indent in her head. It is weird. You know, that that's seemingly unexplained. I mean, I know that, you know, let's be real. An end, it could be from a lot of things. You know, it could be from a lifetime of things. It could be, it could be a birth thing. It, um, the different coloring of hair. I know people with birthmarks on their heads. Sometimes the hair will grow white through your birthmark. So there are, there are, there are explanations, however, paired next to your encounter, it does make it a little bit more curious. Yeah, I I actually have, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's an autoimmune thing or if it's alopecia or what, but like whenever I get super stressed out, I'll get weird bald spots on my head. I know if Jen, the guy who cuts my hair, my stylist, as you can see, <laughs> style, uh, she always always finds these like nickel sized bald spots on my head and it'll move around. And once it, once all the hair falls out, new hair will grow in, but it'll grow in like almost clear until the pigment starts coming in again. And then it just fills back in. I don't know. It's fucking weird. I've, I've seen it firsthand. It's weird. It is definitely weird. I've never had digital faces blow up on my forehead, but my hair does do weird shit. This is true. So, the I encounter, know. the encounter, it's, I mean, it does, it does feel more alien than anything. If yeah. you ask me, which like, if I had to put my money somewhere, that's where I'd put my money. And we can't exclude, um, aliens using fear as a tactic, you know? No, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Because I don't know. I just, I just feel like they're all sus. Like I said, anything oh, yeah. that can get it, especially it almost feels like it was using the fear to keep her where she was. The more that I think about it happening, the fact that it was steady and just kept coming, kept coming. There makes- is like a, there is like a, 
and I'm I'm not going to use the right word, but it it almost has like this um, hypnotic effect. Oh yeah, like this traumatic hypnosis type situation. Almost, you know, what I mean, just like because like it's like repetitive, it's on time, it's yeah, like a water torture. Dick yeah, dick. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dripping. That sucks. I'm curious, Katie, if you hear this. I know, I know you're going to be listening because I'm going to email you and tell you we used your story because you asked us about it. Um, I would love to hear if you have any more um, details on what these faces look like. I know you said they were yeah. distorting that. Yeah. And that's, that's another weird thing. The fact that they were distorting and like making sinister faces at you and shit like that's, that's clearly malevolent behavior. Like it wanted you to be yeah. scared. It wasn't yeah. like sticking its tongue out and being like, Hey little kid, look at this. Yeah. That it was like, we're pissed. We are here yeah. for bad intentions. So it wanted you to be scared. I couldn't agree more with that, that it it definitely 100% wanted you to be scared. Yeah. I mean, she used the term. It felt like prolonged torture. Yeah. Which is for, for being a little kid, like she said, around sixth grade, that falls into that area where everybody starts having weird shit hit. Yeah. Everybody we talk to is like from about, about second grade to about sixth grade is when shit starts just popping off, popping off. So I would love to hear if you remember any other details about these faces. If there was like, if you could remember uh, a color, a pigment, or if they had any defining features, what their eyes look like, um, anything that you can remember, definitely feel free to hit us back up for sure and do a follow up because now I'm super curious. Um, also, you said you had other. So weird. The whole thing is just bizarre. It is weird. And the, the, like, like the, I've never heard anything quite like that, where these faces charge you and and explode right before they get to you, and, and it's almost like in this. Like I, 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 for whatever reason, I'm I'm picturing the uh, the game like asteroids. Like that, those are the graphics. Like it just yeah, blah, 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 like these little pixelated <laughs> bricks that just blah, blah, blah. yeah. And the fact that she like used the term conveyor belt, like it was just, they just kept coming, just kept yeah. coming. Did they, like, I, I almost have to ask, was it, was it like the exact same parallel line every time? Did they, did they like change in height or anything? Were the faces similar? Were they different? Like, was it the same face over and over and over again? Like it's it just weird. has, it just has me feeling some type of like MK ultra, trauma yeah. hypnosis type thing it's so fucking yeah, it's like gross. the the good the, the accurate description is on the tip of my tongue but that's about as best i can get right now it's like a mk ultra hypnotic trauma torture scenario yeah. for whatever fucking reason intergalactic torture dude it's terrible it is i'm i'm curious when if you hear this and you send us in some other details uh definitely add your other paranormal instances in here because it'd be interesting to see like if maybe some of these things line up with other things that you yeah. wouldn't necessarily think that they would because this could just be a the the kicker of a whole lifetime of weird you know, extra planetary manipulation you know oh absolutely because they're even in my own case like i just recently put together that like some of my stuff where I'm like, I was thinking about it and talking about it. And I'm like, Oh shit. Like that lines up perfectly. Wow. Never, I never put it together earlier in life. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. And if you do make it back up there, like, like you said, you're getting ready to go back up there 30 years later. Uh, let us know if you see anything or feel anything, because now you're an adult. Now you've got kind of a grasp. Maybe not a grasp on what it happened exactly, but you you know of what happened now. So you can kind of be alert and be aware of things that are going to stand out and feel weird when you're back up that way. So definitely hit us back up. Um, yeah, we appreciate you sending this in. I'll uh, shoot you an email whenever this drops because I know you were curious about our take on it. Um, what else did you say? You said some nice stuff there at the end. About if we knew each other, we'd be. We are friends. Yeah, we are friends. We are friends. One big happy holocult. But yeah, me and Kyle are pretty cool guys. So yeah, 
We do all right. It's questionable. It depends on who you ask, technically. That, that is true. So, yeah. Um, again, thank you. Hit us back up with the, uh, some follow-up. We're interested to see it because this is bizarre. I'm really curious about any kind of details on these faces. Shit's weird. It is weird. It is weird. But that'll wrap it up for today, Hollow Cult. Everybody, um, get through this work week. If you have an encounter you'd like for us to feature in the future, revert back to the beginning. And uh, until we meet again, stay safe, stay weird. And if you experience digital faces exploding in your face, uh, we can't really help you right now because we're not even sure ourselves what the fuck is going on.